Yeah, you you ordered these things for for the, for the office, but I can't I can't I can't see. Uh, there's nothing. Like I can't see. I can't. Oh. <laughs> uh, happy almost uh, eclipse season. Uh, welcome to spring. Also to uh, season five and episode seven of Niagara 411 Live. Uh, yeah, goodbye, goodbye. Uh, with Lee Starry. We are fueled by Gales Gas Bars. We are supported by Verge Insurance Group. We are also supported by Ace Alignment and Equal Wellness Services. We are here at uh, the lovely Fiddler's Poor House at 149 uh, St. Paul Street in uh, St. Catharines. And those are some of the fine, fine uh, fare items you'll be able to sample here at Fiddler's. You come on down and join us for lunch or whatever. Yeah, we're almost at I don't know. Uh, anyway, uh, we do hope you can join us. We have an absolutely jam-packed show today. We had uh, a young lady by the name of Ashley Cronkite on the show a couple of weeks ago. And at that point in time, we were hunting for her brother, Jay, uh, Johnny. And Johnny was found uh, within the last uh, couple of weeks that we, we chatted. Unfortunately, he was found deceased. We're going to be talking to Ashley uh, very near the top of the program today. Uh, Niagara Falls has a brand new university. The University of Niagara Falls uh, launched this past week and begins classes in April. We're going to be talking to Dr. David Gray, the provost of that, uh, that uh, new University of Niagara Falls. Uh, Jamie si James Simons is going to be with here, uh, with us here as well. The Tool Project continues in Niagara, trying to keep the momentum going on that great cause, and uh, many things on the program. And so I'm not going to waste a lot of time right now. I want to get to get this thing rolling because we got a we got a packed uh, 90 minutes coming up for you. We'll be back in 30 seconds. Here we go. Yeah, Kevin. Kevin Jack, ladies and gentlemen, on the right-hand side of your screen of WeStream. Um, we want to uh, start this program off with uh, a bit of a solemn note, uh, a recognition of some of uh, Canada's uh, finest. On this day in 2009, four Canadian Armed Forces members were killed in Afghanistan. Uh, two improvised explosive device blasts, uh, IEDs, as we've come to know them. The deceased were Trooper Jack Boutillier, whose friends and family remember him as a happy person who always had a smile on his face. Corporal Tyler Crooks, who was a selfless, kind person. He would give the shirt off his back to someone in need without question. Trooper Corey Hayes, whose friends remember him not only as a friend and a comrade in arms, but a brother who inspired them to stand up in the face of danger and do what was right. Master Corporal Scott Vernelli, who loved playing sports when he wasn't in uniform. And uh, we just want to give our uh, tip of the chapeau to those men. And of course, we will remember you, uh, Tyler Crooks, a uh, Niagaran who gave his life and pay the ultimate price for our freedom. So um, we just wanted to acknowledge the uh, the anniversary of those uh, those young men leaving our planet and leaving it a little bit better than they found it. So, um, yes, we have the uh, we have the eclipse uh, coming up on uh, on a April the eighth, and it's it's these glasses. <laughs> My wife ordered from uh, Amazon, and uh, I see absolutely nothing. I'm assuming that when we're looking directly into the sun, that we'll be seeing something. Uh, so, but I don't know. 
Uh, Kevin, I know you bought some of these things. You bought the higher tech ones, though, because you have more money than my family does. I'm on a fixed income. No, you but... just have to scroll a little further down on Facebook. <laughs> well, yeah, mine are good. They look like the uh, dollar store sunglasses, not like the old 3D glasses that you got. So, yeah. And you so, know what? Even, I even ordered extra Lee for friends who might forget. Well, aren't you aren't you the thoughtful one? I thought so. Yes. Thought nice um, we, and, uh, and, of course, that's uh, the big day is April the 8th. Niagara is ramping up like crazy for this thing. Um, mm -hmm. There is a mm -hmm. e there are even charges of uh, hotels gouging prices. Like it's just um, this is going to be one of the biggest events of the year, especially for Niagara and around the planet as well. You have no idea. Well, oh, maybe you do, but if you don't, uh, you better kind of get with the program because there are thousands of people, maybe a million. Kevin, you were saying that. Uh, um, at Niagara Falls, I know we stream, by the way, Canada's uh, premier streaming uh, company streams the Niagara Falls City Council meetings, uh, what, every Monday or whatever? Yeah. Um, and, and they were talking about, what, Kevin, a million uh, people maybe in Niagara? Yeah, they're guesstimating it could be a million. And to put that into context, the biggest event that they've had in Niagara Falls was the Nick Willenda Walk. The Willenda Walk, yeah. Yeah, the tightrope walk across Niagara Falls. And we remember how big those crowds were. That was 150,000 people. And they're expecting a million. A million. A million yeah. on Monday, April the 8th. And, of yeah. course, they're also anticipating that the weekend, that's a Monday, so that the Saturday and Sunday are also going to be crazy down in the falls. Now, I want to I, I want to acknowledge Niagara 411 as well. Nick, uh, always a pleasure to uh, be a, be an ancillary partner with you. We share content and uh, and viewers, et cetera, with Niagara 411 here on Niagara 411 Live with Lee Sterry. Now, the, the, next, uh, the next scheduled show... For this program after today is April the 3rd so that's five short days be before the big day of April the 8th so um, we want to do something on, on on the 8th uh, Kevin and I have been noodling around exactly how we want to handle this because um, I, I mean there's going to be radio stations covering it I, I don't know how you deal with an eclipse on a radio station, but yeah, they may figure out a way. I don't know. But uh, we have the ultimate opportunity here uh, doing this kind of program to, to bring you our version of the coverage of the eclipse. And to be perfectly honest, all cards on the table, total transparency, we're not exactly 100% sure yet how we're going to to do this, what, how, how the, how the we stream, how our feed is is going to uh, manifest itself on on April the eighth. But we do know that we have a show, one of these Niagara Four One One Live with Lee Sterry shows on the third. So we're going to try to line up um, a handful of folks that we can talk to from different angles of that uh, of that thing. And, and Kevin, we were talking about the the fire chief. You were talking about the. the He's not, our new fire chief isn't going to be taking over until after. Yeah, um, Scott Lawson, who's the fire chief in Port Colbert, has in been Port hired Colbert, on yeah. as deputy in Niagara Falls, but that transition is not happening until after the solar eclipse, out of respect for emergency preparedness in both of those communities. Yeah. So it's a, this is a, this is an There's a lot going deal. on here. A million people, imagine that. All it took was, you know, a celestial event that happens once a century yeah. to get a million people down here. Now, um, to completely switch gears here, a couple of weeks ago, we chatted with this lady, Ashley Cronkright, her uh, brother went missing. Johnny Cronkright went, uh, went missing. He was on his way to uh, a store and either got there and then went someplace else and disappeared or never got there. And the story has developed, unfortunately, in a negative way uh, since then. Joining us to bring us up to date with uh, with everything to do with that story is uh, Ashley. Have we, got, have we got you there? Can you slide a little bit more into the camera, Ash? We got you. Oh, actually, we've got two folks here. We've got Ashley and who have you got with you there, kiddo? That's my brother, Bill. Well, hi, Bill. How you doing? Nice to meet you. Okay. Excellent. How are uh, you doing? Yeah, well, I'm, I'm fine, thank you. Now, uh, unfortunately, um, Ashley, the story developed in a in a not so positive way for your family. Can you tell us what happened from the time we last talked? Because I know you told us that you were going to organize uh, a search and rescue party, if you will, for the Saturday following our conversation. And, and apparently that's when 
this story really developed. Can you pick the story up from there and tell us what happened? So we did uh, meet for the search. Um, it was uh, like family members and community members who got together. Um, I had a strong feeling that my brother was in this house. I even mentioned it to the police that I felt like my brother was in this house. Um, so that was the first place we checked that morning. We went to 23 Raymond Street and uh, ended up gaining access to the house. And uh, that's where we discovered my brother. Uh, there was seven people in the house um, just hanging out while my brother's body was composing in the next room. <sighs> okay. Um, now, what was it about this house that you originally felt was the place that Johnny was? Why did why did you know or feel that he was there? Um, I think it was just uh, like the bond that I had with my brother. I just had like a strong hole in my gut that he was in there. Why this house? Intuition. Okay. I don't know why that happened. Like, I, I, I searched all over the city, like, three or four different cities we were searching for Johnny. And that house, it just, just pulled on me, like, pulled on my soul that he was in there. And I was at that house three, four times a day. Those people came out on the porch, smoked cigarettes with me, uh, took a missing person poster from me, gave me a hug, told me, I hope you find your brother. Meanwhile... He was there all my the time. My brother was upstairs the whole time. Yeah. Okay. Um, wh what, I'm, what I'm trying to get at, though, is this house on Raymond Street has a reputation, does it not? It does, yes. Okay. A reputation for what? Uh, for being like a drug house. All right. So it's like, a, it's like a, in the old vernacular, we'd call it a crack house or a drug den or something like that. Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, and you must have known that your brother had frequented this residence? So that's the thing. Like, a lot of people are saying, oh, my brother's just this addict. And that, like, addiction didn't consume my brother's life. My brother was working on getting clean, but he did have his days where he slipped up. Sure. And yeah. I'm not, I'm I not, think that was what happened one of these on, on the day he went missing. Yeah. Um, I think he ended up at that house, probably with a slip up or um, to have some beers. Like he knows the people in the house. He's known them since we were in diapers. Two okay. of them were our blood cousins. They're blood cousins of Johnny yeah. and, and you? Yeah. That live in the house? Yeah. And they still, when you were there on previous occasions, they still wouldn't let you in? It wasn't until we showed up with the search party that we got into the house. Okay. In the, in the local media, there have been a couple of different versions of how you did gain access to that house. Uh, one, of the, one of the original reports stated that it was kind of a forcible entry, and then that was retracted and said that you were allowed admittance into the house. How did, how did your entry into the house actually happen? Uh, so the search party showed up before I did because it was a large number of, of people. So I was near like the end of the line. Um, the people at the, be the front of the line were already knocking on the door. And someone opened the door and I don't know who was knocking, but they grabbed the door because they tried to shut the door again when they seen yeah. that we were there. Okay. And I went running up. And um, one of the occupants in the house said that only me and my sister could go in. And uh, there was a gentleman with us, and he was like, well, the girls are not going in by themselves. I'm coming in with the girls. Okay. And then, like, me and my sister went up first, and then there was people that followed behind us. So we were invited. Like, they told us we could come in. And they knew that you were going to find your brother deceased in their living room. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah. Okay. Well, I don't know if they knew we would because of the way they they barricaded the room. Um, they buried my brother's body underneath garbage and clothing and cat litter. They were dumping comet on him. So even to like get to where my brother is to find him, we had to get through a barricade first, and then. Well, what the heck? Big- what were these people going to do with him? What was their plan? That's a, good That's a good question. All right. Okay. Uh, so then obviously the police were called. Yeah. And then what happened? The police show up and then what happened? Police showed up. Um, took a while, but they eventually uh, let everybody out of the house that was in there. Yeah. Nobody was handcuffed or anything. Nobody was arrested. Um, at, no, they took them in for questioning, and they were actually released from police custody before my brother's body was even brought out of the house. All right. So, what is what is your uh, a guess or feeling or intuition, whatever word you want to apply to it, uh, as to how Johnny died? Was it an accident? Was it an overdose? Did somebody harm him? What are you thinking? What do you? What went on? I feel like someone harmed my brother, and they tried to cover it up because there's been people that overdosed in that house before, where they did call for emergency services. So why not my brother? Why did you guys try to hide my brother in there? Okay, uh, I have only I, I I really only have another one more avenue to follow here and again our condolences uh, for the for the death of your brother it's, it's tragic and i should have mentioned that right off the off the top but we're so sorry that the story took this terrible turn um you said that you'd been to this place a couple of times a day or more since he went missing and you said that you had mentioned this location to local law enforcement why did someone in an official capacity not follow up and check this place out long before you had a search party to do so? Yeah. Hello? Oh, we freeze? Yeah, we just froze up here for a second. Okay, sorry. But, I mean, you could see this was just playing out on social media, and, I mean, it was gathered. You could see hundreds. Yeah. Hundreds of people. Yeah, sorry, we just lost... uh, we just lost Ashley there. Okay, I and, just, uh, uh, and again, and again, as always, um, and I've stated this many, many times before. Sir. Oh, I think we've almost got her back. I have great respect for law enforcement and the Niagara Regional Police Service. I do, I really do. However, there seems to be some sort of handcuff procedure, and again, that's kind of a bad, uh, bad reference um, pun, on law enforcement to actually follow up on things that people know to be or suspect to be true and here's this young man that heaven knows how long he had been lying deceased in the living room of this house on Raymond Street in St. Catharines and you go okay we have you back my question to you Ashley was um, why didn't the police check this out sooner what did they tell you what why was did they give you a reason why they wouldn't follow up on your suspicions that johnny was in this house oh we lost him again shoot now here we go it it was just it was just a gut feeling and they can't go on just gut feeling but they know this uh, house did they not know this house already well that's the thing i found out after my brother discovered my brother uh, they had a media release that they um, knew my brother had connections to this house and during the missing person investigation not one officer even went and knocked on the door like See. they didn't even need to obtain a search warrant to go in they didn't need to do a wellness check they could have just knocked on the door and asked if my brother was there All and right. they never even did that yeah that well that was kind of my point there had to be something that somebody could do to say you know okay hey we'll check it out knock on the door and say hey have you seen this guy you know or how about like they knew we were going there to search the day we did yeah 
we met right across the street from the police station. They could have sent an officer with us. They could have sent the crisis team with us. Like, we, we shouldn't have been the ones to discover my brother like that. Yeah, I kind of... I kind of have to agree with you there. So, um, at least you have, uh, at least you know what happened. Well, uh, no, you don't know what happened. I'll take that back. Um, you know where he is. Um, that part of the story in a bad way is, is completed. What happens, what happens next? Um, is the investigation continuing? Do you know anything about what's going on? It's an ongoing investigation, I'm told. Yeah. Uh, so we're just trying to give the police their time to do their investigation. Um, right now, we're really upset about how the whole missing person part of the investigation went. And I don't Hopefully blame you. Hopefully, we have um, more success with with this part of the investigation and Johnny getting justice for what happened to him. Yeah. But uh, only time will tell. All right, Ashley Cronkite, thank you very much for joining us. Can again. I just say one? Could, Absolutely, could just go. Yeah. Put one more thing out there. Yes. Hello, how's it going? Hey, Bill. So my name is Brooklyn Mayor. I'm a close friend and considered family to Johnny and the entire Cronkite family. Uh, unfortunately, based upon his disappearance and the time of the search, I was away on work in Boston. Uh, being back in Niagara myself. Uh, I just want the community to know that the family, friends, we appreciate everything. We're all here to support one another. But we do have a very good advocate on our behalf, which I'd love to give a shout out to. Her name is Selena Parker. She works for the Indigenous Justice Pathway. Her direct phone number, if anybody would like to contact her, is 289-488-1259. And she would love to hear from you, love to hear the times that you have had with Johnny and the effect that this has took place on you and in the community as well and on also on her behalf she would like me to give the message here that the indigenous justice is healing and learning we call for a thorough investigation of the circumstance surrounding Johnny's death and the missing person response on part of the NRP in order to find the healing and learn what we can do differently in the future to benefit the living people that are still here. Well said. Also, uh, yes. Also, to touch base on that matter, uh, you know, based upon what took place with the investigation and everything else, we have had police involvement after the fact of Johnny being discovered, police escorts, blocking off roads, you name it. How come all these resources were not used to be able to try to locate Johnny? Just because somebody has a very deep intuition and very connected to their loved one, they followed their intuition and they found their brother. This information was led to the NRP right from the beginning of this investigation. And up until my time of returning back to Niagara, I've been in contact with many friends and many families. And not one person was ever contacted either by person, by phone, by any form, by the NRP police department to try to get information to help locate John. So this, this, yeah. this is the big matter at hand as well, too. But what I would like everybody to know is we are laying Johnny to rest uh, this Saturday. We are having a service at George Star Funeral Home, followed by Sunday. We're having a celebration of life. And we will be coming back out with the media to be able to have a lot more traction and be able to bring a lot more attention and shine light to this situation in the following week as we all do need the answers and the community does need a lot of support. All right, thank you, Bill. Um, and uh, again, uh, a message uh, well sent and well received. I feel your frustration and the frustration of the friends and family of Johnny. And uh, yeah, I, 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 think, I think there are a few answers that we have yet to receive. Thanks for being here, folks. I appreciate it. And uh, again, our condolences and best wishes for the family then, and Johnny's Thanks. friends. Thank you. Thank you oh, questions, 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 procedures, procedures, etc. cetera. Um, last Thursday, uh, there was an open house, sort of a, a launch, if you will, an official opening, you can call it a lot of things, of the, United, uh, of the University of Niagara Falls. 
uh, or UNFC, Uni University of Niagara Falls, Canada. My wife and actually, uh, my wife and I stopped by to have a look around and hear a presentation and uh, take a bit of a tour. And I thought it was, uh, considering the fact that they're going to be up and running with some classes beginning in April, it was a good time to chat with um, the the head uh, the head guy at uh, the University of Niagara Falls. His name is Dr. David Gray. He's the provost and vice president of academic for the University of Niagara Falls. Uh, David, welcome to the program. How are you doing today? I'm good, Lee. Thank you very much. And thank you for the invitation. It's, uh, it's great to meet you. Oh, it's uh, great to meet you, too. I, I wanted to introduce myself this past Thursday, but it was a little bit busy there, and you were otherwise occupied, so I didn't want to get in the way. But uh, anyway, we're happy to have you here. Thanks for being here with us today. Can you, before we talk about the University of Niagara Falls, which is that's pretty cool to begin with, just to be able to say that, um, yep. but tell us a little bit about Dr. David Gray. Who are you? Yeah. Okay. So um, I'm originally from Cornwall in the United Kingdom. So uh, I love the I'm pasties. Very, very proud Cornishman. Um, yeah. So yeah, and uh, pirate country. Um, I uh, I grew up and uh, I spent time in South Africa. Uh, that's where I did my doctorate. Um, I've lived and worked in various places, the Falklands. Um, I've been in Hong Kong. Um, and uh, my family and I, before coming to Nova Scotia, um, we were up in the Shetland Islands in the north of Scotland. Okay. Then we were in Nova Scotia for 10 years, where I was the dean uh, of a faculty at Dalhousie University. Um, and then I had the opportunity um, to come and live in, Ni in the Niagara region at the new University of Niagara Falls. And, and so uh, how, did you, how did you find out about this gig and land this uh, cool job? So uh, it was advertised, um, you know, and um, it's very, very seldom. It's a once in a lifetime opportunity to get involved in the development and creation of a new university. They just do not happen. Um, you know, so this is Canada's newest university. And it allows us that opportunity to build something that is going to be fit for the 21st century and for modern learners. So, you know, we haven't got that kind of 200 year tradition and, you know, history and baggage right. that we deal with. Building systems and processes that are going to work for the modern students. So that's just an opportunity too big to miss. Okay, um, Doctor Gray, or Dave, do I call you David, or I call you Doctor? Oh, no, do I call David. David. No, David. Dave, David. <laughs> David is good. Okay. Yeah. Um, so now that we know a little bit about you, and thank you for sharing that, um, and welcome to Niagara, by the way. Thank you. Um, Tell us about what the University of Niagara Falls is, because I know there has been there's been a lot of talk of it. First of all, over the last uh, few years, as as um, things went around Niagara Council and the region, et cetera, and there's there's been a, a lot of uh, a lot of discussion about the preparation, and it's taken a little while to get yep. to this point. So, yep. for those people that might not be exactly clear, what is the University of Niagara Falls? What is your mandate, and and what is the what is the vision for this for this new institute of learning here? Okay, so um, and you're right; it's taken a long time um, to get to where we are, um, you know, but. The city of Niagara Falls, um, you know, has been very keen and interested in in uh, in um, having a university for quite a while. So, you know, higher education has been uh, historically underserved in the Niagara region. Um, students have not had the choice that perhaps they are uh, students have in other parts of Ontario and across Canada. Um, and so, the city was, you know, um, perfectly positioned for a university. So, um, and uh, the council, the mayor, have been trying to. Get trying to uh, attract or to create a, you know, a university for quite a period of time. So, um, so here we are, um, you know, so yes, it's taken a while, but we're finally here. Um, we've started, you know, university is a big thing. So, you know, we're not starting with a big bang. You know, we, we have five programs that have been um, uh, formally approved um, by the provincial government. Uh, we had to go through exactly the same um, approval, rigorous uh, quality and standards process that any university has to go through. Um, mm -hmm. You know, so because um, people always say, are you a real university? Is this legit? Um, you know, and uh, I turn and say, absolutely, because the hoops that we have to jump through, the bar that we have to meet is higher, um, actually, than, uh, than public universities. Um, and we've had to prove ourselves. So the programs we currently have um, that we're offering now are a Master of Management, a Master of Data Analytics, 
Uh, we have a Master of Arts in Digital Media and Global Communications. We have a bachelor's and undergraduate degree in business administration, and we also have a BSc honors degree in biomedical sciences. Wow. Those programs yeah. were, were all created and prioritized around labor needs and labor shortages in the region. So, you know, the, so the industry and the employers in the region are all saying we need people that are skilled and trained in these areas because we have the jobs. So that's kind of what we're doing. We're aligning ourselves with that. But all of our programs are being delivered through what we're calling the digital mindset. So. You know, we're a 21st century, uh, you know, um, community now, um, you know, and to be successful in employment, you've got to understand and be comfortable in the virtual world with data and technology. So all of our graduates, no matter what they study, they will have that competency and that training to be successful in the modern world of work. They'll understand artificial intelligence, virtual reality, uh, machine learning, and so on and so forth. Super interesting. Now, you're... Your first classes uh, begin this April, like just around the yes. corner, right? Yeah, yeah that's correct. So uh, we, uh, two of our master's programs are starting in April, um, Master of Management and Master of Data Analytics. Um, we're, you know, we're not expecting large numbers of students, so we're probably going to have 70, perhaps 80 students. Um, you know, but it's a, it's a nice start. Um, you know, yeah. it gets the students into the community, gets us started. You know, we want to ensure that we're working with the community. The community is excited. Um, whenever I'm walking to and from the building, he's saying, when are the students coming? When are the students coming? That, you know, there's this buzz around the place that, you know, this is here now. The students are going to be in, um, you know, and people are excited about what that's going to mean for downtown Niagara Falls because we are located in the downtown yeah. area. I was I was going to mention that David and the fact that um, one of one of the exciting things about this is the fact that you're not tucked away somewhere out in an agricultural zone where uh, where the community has to come to meet you. You've gone um, the university has come to an area that has been kind of underserved for quite some time, which is downtown Niagara Falls on Queen Street. So you're right at the the, uh, the university building is right at the corner of Queen Street and Ontario Avenue uh, in downtown Niagara Falls, which is, which is pretty darn cool for Queen Street because I began my career, as a matter of fact. My first job was just down the street uh, at Queen and St. Clair. Uh, when the radio stations were located there, and um, and it was a pretty vibrant community at that time, which has uh, it's deteriorated somewhat since then. But um, I would I would predict, much like some of the things that have happened in downtown St. Catharines, that uh, to have uh, your organization and your students and your faculty in that area, that uh, that it's got to be it's got to be a growth point at least for that area. I would think. Yeah. It's, um, you know, and uh, why would we want to be out in the rural area? I mean, Niagara Falls is just such an awesome city, right? I mean, it's it's just great. The location is great. The, you know, the people are great. And, um, you know, it's it's a location that everybody, you know, no matter where you are in the world, you say we're in Niagara Falls, everybody knows where you are, right? Yeah. And the city is welcoming. It's got great stuff to do, young people and so on and so forth. All the facilities you'd need. Um, you know, and yeah, we're in the downtown area and, you know, we're committed to that. So, you know, we've already seen the students aren't here yet, but we've already seen some of those lease signs coming down on the Queen Street, new mm. businesses coming in. Yeah. You know, they know that there's going to be that footfall along Queen Street that's right. coming very, very soon. Um, you know, and we want to be part of that kind of success story, that rejuvenation, that, re you know, um, of this area. Um, I've been there, I've done it in previous institutions, um, you know, and I can say with complete confidence that, you know, the downtown area is going to come alive. There's going to be, you know, there's going to be young people there. There's going to be businesses there. I it's hope so. It's going to be a great place. I hope yep. so. Uh, now, I wouldn't be doing my job if I didn't ask you um, a question that I'm sure is on the minds of a lot of people that are uh, yeah. watching or will watch this interview in that uh, we have... We, we're in the Niagara Peninsula, in southern Ontario, southwestern Ontario, and southeastern Ontario, we have some. We have quite a, <laughs> quite a gathering of uh, post-secondary yeah. education uh, places. I.e., yeah. in St. Catharines, there's Brock University. Then, uh, then we've got uh, McMaster is one in, in Hamilton that's, that's well attended. Western um, in uh, up in London way, and then we got Queens in Saint, in uh, Kingston and York. Like we have a lot 
of higher education facilities within a stone's throw of Niagara. Yep. What, yep. Sets, what, what sets the University of Niagara Falls apart or how does it fit in to, to, to that larger spectrum, if you will, of higher education? Yeah, and that's a really, really good question, um, you know, because people will say that, you know, there's Niagara College right on the doorstep and, you know, Windsor's down that way and, you know, so on and so forth. So um, I think the first thing that we need to be clear about is we're not here to compete with other universities or colleges. Um, we're here to complement, right? It doesn't make any sense for us to be delivering programs that other universities are delivering. Um, you know, I think what sets us aside is the choice that we're going to give our learners. Um, you know, we're all about empowering learners to be able to learn at times that are convenient to them in modes that allow them to learn. You know, um, people learn in different ways. So our programs will be available in a face-to-face -face mode where they come, you know, like they would at any other university. There will be a completely online version so students will be able to study at home in the evenings, at weekends, around work and family commitments. And then we're also going to hybrid. So they'll, they'll get the best of both worlds. They'll do some online They'll come in and do some intensive weekends with us where they can meet their other students, they can learn from their other students and, you know, get to know about different cultures around the world and different places. Um, you know, so part of this is about the, the choice that we're going to give our learners um, and that digital mindset, right? So making sure that the learners, no matter what they're studying with us, have the capability and the skills needed to be successful in the modern world of work. We're not aspiring to be a research intensive university. Right. Um, our, our faculty will be doing research. They will be doing scholarly activity as well. But our priority is going to be at our, our students and preparing them for employment. Who would the, um, I'm trying to figure out, I'm hesitating, but I'm trying to figure out how to uh, really accurately ask the next question. Who would be a prime candidate, if you will, for, uh, to, to be a student or a learner? at uh, the University of Niagara Falls. I guess, I, I guess what I'm asking is, who would your target market be? Yeah, so um, another great question. Um, so what we're finding is the students who are attracted, there's a lot of, there's a lot of interest in us right now, for sure, um, you know, both domestic and international. So, you know, that's something that people always say is, are they all gonna be international students, you know? And the answer is no. Um, you know, because of the nature of the programs, we've got a lot of domestic interest as well. Mm -hmm. um, you know, but what we're finding is we're finding that these students are people who have a very clear career path. They know what they want to do. They know where they want to go. And they know and understand the education they need and the skills they need. We're also finding that a lot of the students who are being attracted have kind of what I would call an entrepreneurial approach to things as well, right? Okay. They want to get things going. They want to be part of something new, um, you know, because... It's a bit of a, you know, a step is, well, you know, this is a new university, you know, there are no students, there are no graduates. So we're getting all these students who want to be part of working with us in partnership to develop this new university, which is fantastic because they're kind of social minded, they're, they're community focused, you know, and so on and so forth. So it's going to be a very, very powerful group of, you know, when the students, faculty and the employees get together with the community members, it's going to be incredible. I, I honestly can't wait. You can probably tell how excited I am. You are excited. Yeah, I could, I could tell, and <laughs> I could tell, and we saw you pass this past Thursday that you have a genuine enthusiasm for this project, uh, which you should have, since it's a, it's a new job. But, but uh, yeah. it, I think it, it feels like it goes beyond a job for you. It, 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 it seems does. like you're genuinely happy about this. Oh, I, I am so happy. So, so you know, I've been in universities for 25 years, senior administration for 25 years, you know, and universities doing a good job, but there's frustrations there, right? They can't move fast enough. There are budget budget problems and challenges and, you know, and so on and so forth. You've seen it in the news about, you know, universities having to cut programs and yeah. so on and so forth. You know, this is an opportunity for us to create something where we can actually learn from those challenges, learn for the, to make sure that we're doing something that's going to work you know, for the next 50, 100, 150 years. I always say to people, all the universities that you know of started somewhere, right? You're at the, you're, you're here now, you know, and in 50, 100 years time, people are going to look back and say, that's where it started. The hallowed, that's when the you, University of Niagara Falls kind of this started. You may experience the hallowed halls of uh, the University <laughs> of Niagara Falls. 
Um, yeah. uh, David, I'm going to I'm going to let you go, but I know that okay. there are many questions that people would have, i.e., uh, residencies, and I know you have plans for that. Uh, transportation yeah. and parking, and I know that your organization have plans for that because we reviewed those last Thursday when you opened. So people that have those yep. kinds of questions can certainly have them answered because uh, it seems like you've you've thought uh, this through uh, pretty darn carefully and. Um, and I know that that's, that's the case. So uh, now, uh, final question before we yep. do let you go is yep. if we have twigged uh, the interest of some, and I'm sure we have, what's the best yep. way to, you, you, we live in a digital world, so I'm assuming the best way to find you is online. Oh, we froze up a little. Yeah, I think we just got a little bit of a freeze there. Oh, doggone it. Unfortunately, I'm assuming... We'll... On the very last question, too. Yeah, we'll get it back here in a minute, Lee. <laughs> yeah. But uh, so let's just uh, thank our sponsors here for a second while I wait on getting... Uh... Indeed. Gales Gas Bars, Rainbow Registered, uh, serving Fort Erie, Niagara Falls, Niagara the Lake, St. Catharines, Thorold, virtually all of uh, Niagara. Uh, if you want to send them an email, uh, by all means do so. If you have anything at all you want to ask them or mention, make a mention, Gail's Inquiry. We haven't mentioned this before, but Gail's Inquiry at gales.ca. All right? Is, uh, if you want to send them an email, that's the place to go. Um, head office is in Niagara Falls. Verge Insurance Group, uh, located over on Ontario Street in St. Catharines. One of Niagara's longest serving insurance uh, brokers for home, life, business, whatever it is. That uh, car insurance is as well, whatever it is, whatever coverage you need or protection you need for you at uh, prices that you can uh, afford, they'll seek them out for you. Ace Alignment. Uh, specializing in uh, wheel alignments and brakes and suspensions and you can get your MCO inspections done there too. Front end repairs, oil changes, the whole Megillah. Um, uh, Darren and Matt would uh, love to see you pop by there on North Street in St. Catharines. That's a little street off Geneva Street that runs right behind the new uh, uh, regional police station uh, at the corner of Welland and Geneva. They're right behind there on, on North Street. Um, also, we want to uh, thank uh, Audrey Wall and her whole crew at uh, Equal Wellness Services here. Uh, just a new location on Vine Street between Scott and Carlton. Um, started out with full foot care services, which they still provide, but many, many other services as well as uh, skin care, very high tech machinery that they have on board to to look after you and uh, for all of your foot needs and uh, skin needs and all those other things, by all means, uh, head into Equal Wellness Services on Vine Street. Yeah. Always, always a pleasure to have these folks on uh, on board. Yeah, just going to buy us a couple seconds here, Lee. Looks like uh, we're having some internet instability over here, yeah, which uh, kinda, doesn't happen too often. I kind of noticed often. we had a, a few flashes uh, from time to time, and. Anybody that uh, subscribes to the internet, be it high speed or... Uh, is anybody on dial-up anymore? Is there any <laughs> such... Is, 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 I don't Bing, 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 bing. <laughs> That's talking about dinosaurism, eh? Dial-up, what is that? Uh, we don't even know what... People don't even know how to dial, let alone was there internet and dial-up? Um, but, uh, yeah, as, as we know, as we know, uh, internet is uh, the internet. But uh, Lee, I think we're uh, we're back up and running, and looking forward to this interview for gosh over a year now. Yeah, do we have uh, have Jenny standing by? Uh, our our apologies to uh, um, Dr. David Gray, Provost and uh, Vice President of Academic for uh, University of Niagara Falls for that uh, that bit of a freeze up there. But uh, check it out online. Kevin put a lot of visions uh, videos up there to show you, so it's, it's pretty cool. Uh, now, joining us uh, is, is Jenny. We, we chatted with her just over a, a year ago, I guess it is, and it's been, a, it, it's been a year since she became the proud owner of a brand new kidney. Uh, so we thought we'd check in. Hey, Jenny, how are you? Hey, I'm good, how are you? I am well, thank you very much for asking. So, uh, walk us uh, walk us through your your journey from the time that you you acquired this brand new kidney, this brand new life saving organ planted in your body. How how's it been going? It's been going good, you know. I, you know, it's 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 
it's a, it's like a roller coaster, you know. It's yeah. it's not going to be one hundred percent perfect, but it, it's a new life for me. It's got me off dialysis. I'm forever grateful for the family that has given this to me. Like, and I always will be. It's it, it's been hard, but you know. It's, how has it how how has it been hard? What have the challenges been? Mostly the medication. Okay. The medication has given me a lot of depression and like it's been hard like they make me feel kind of sick sometimes like sometimes i don't want to get out of my bed like my hair falls out but it's, it's a small price to pay for being here with my son uh yeah how old is your son now six he just six? turned six yeah february wow that's kind of precious hey yeah um, I'm assuming when you mention the medication, these are like anti-rejection drugs. Yep, and prednisone, which is the worst kind of drug you can you can get on. Yeah, you know, I uh, I have known a number of people that, for different reasons, have been on at one time or another uh, prednisone, and it's mm -hmm. sort of a it's like a it's like a good news bad news story. It's a bit of a miracle yeah. drug in the in the fact that it can accomplish a lot for a lot of different oh, yeah. reasons, but over a prolonged period of use, it can, it's got a downside as well. It's kind of it's kind of one of those strange drugs you've got to be really careful with, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. gives so, you a lot of emotions and feelings, and yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, are you going to have to be on these? these drugs for uh, forever or for a long time? I mean, prednisone, don't they try to wean you off that after a while? No, uh, they no? just lower it down to like a super low dose. Oh, okay. But um, the anti-rejections, like, yes, I will always have to be on them for as long as this kidney lasts. But like, like the surgeon thing, like the surgeon thing or, or said, hopefully another like 35 years. <laughs> you well, know? Uh, Never know. Yeah, well, one 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 would hope. So now there, there's, and as you said, you're off dialysis and all that stuff. So f for all intents and purposes, other than the other than the uh, the anti rejection drugs, etc., um, you're living what would be what most people would term a, for the lack of a better word, a normal life. Yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So. Uh, but do you have to watch your, do you still have to watch your diet and things like that? Yeah, like I have to be cautious of all the salt and, you know, but mostly all the salt. It's the salt that will be yeah. the problem. Okay, so I, I'm, I'm assuming you just avoid it totally. Yeah, and I also got like uh, type 2 diabetes because oh of the meds. Now I have to watch my sugars and, yeah. Our, okay. uh, our our bodies are funny things biologically, aren't they? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Hey, Lee, uh, I, I want to find out from uh, Jen. T can you tell us something that that you're able to do either for the first time or again that you couldn't before? It, it might Have be... a semi-normal life with my kid. You know, run around with them. And when I was on dialysis, I like they call it the dialysis hangover where you'd feel really tired, your body was just exhausted. So I'd be on the couch and my son being very active and energetic would be like, mommy, let's go play outside, let's go to the park. And I'd be like, "Like I can't do it. Like, yeah. I, just, I can't, because I was just on the couch. So like, <laughs> But now you can go out and do that stuff. Yeah, like yeah. I run, I walk a lot more. Um, I, we go to the park a lot. Uh, actually, um, after I got my transplant, I don't know, I mentioned it about going to the aquarium in Toronto. I don't think so. I don't know, but that was like a goal of mine where I would take my son to the aquarium. Mm -hmm. And we did it. We went to the aquarium. And how, how, it how, how, how was it? Did, it? did it live up to your expectations? Yes. <laughs> I loved it. My son loved it, and he loved all the animals. And what's your boy's name? Riordan. Pardon? Riordan. Riordan. Okay. 
Yeah, everyone calls him Rye. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so so you and Rye are doing okay now. We are. Yeah. You know? right. Besides, like some struggles, like you know, with the medication and how it affects my mental health. But yeah, I would say we're doing pretty well. Like. <laughs> Well, we're happy to happy to hear it. As we've talked with a number of people here in Niagara mm -hmm. over the over the years of the, that we've done this program, and it never ceases to amaze me how many people here in Niagara, which would uh, extrapolate to how many people in the province and then in the country, et cetera, that do struggle with kidney disease, and how yeah. and how many people are on that. Are on that list, um, awaiting a donor to, to that matches, et cetera, which has to be stressful in and of its in and of itself. Do you do you still have any kind of contact with the the donor of your kidney? I but yep. judging by what you said, I'm assuming you do. Yep. Yeah. Like I always told them, I was like, you can't get rid of me that easy. <laughs> Now, so, w w yeah. was this a friend or a family member? Uh, no, I met him through Niagara 411, yeah. actually. His stranger. wife, his, he was very much a stranger. I'd never met him before. Um, his wife actually got the, um, sent him the post that you guys created for me. And he reached out and he was like, hey, like I'm O positive. And the rest is history. <laughs> like, Wow. Wow. Yeah. Well, boy, are we ever pleased that we could even play a small part in that. Uh, that is, uh, that really is awesome. So you still have a good relationship with this man. Oh, yeah. And his wife. Like, <laughs> they're, they're, six, they're on their sixth child. Mom, yeah. don't. Yeah, that's cool. Just don't, I, I just don't ask him for another kidney, I guess. <laughs> no, 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 no. I can't take just only one. He needs it, right? <laughs> hey, Jen, is that the little guy there that we can hear in the background? Why don't you bring him around? Let's say hi. No, he's at school. Where's my mom? It's my oh, mom. Oh, okay. It's your mom. Okay. And she's got to be ecstatic, right? Mom, what have you noticed in the last year? I mean, I mean, I threw up a photo earlier, and I think it was dated late March 2023. Are you coming up literally to the one-year anniversary, Jen? Is that what it was? Um, Late March? Yeah. It's been, it's been 14, fourteen months now on the twenty-sixth. Okay, so you yep. were you were like January. Yep. All right. Yep. That's yes. great. Well, um, we're so happy for you. Uh, and I know it comes yep. with its uh, it comes with its challenges. But as you mentioned yep. earlier, the challenges outweigh the benefits. So uh, It does. Happy Happy to have you still with us and going strong, and all the best to your all, all the best to your mom there, and to and to Rye and and the rest of the family. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Hey, <laughs> thanks for being here. Thank you for having me and sharing my story. It, I, it wouldn't have gotten without you guys, right? Uh, yeah. Well, we're happy to, like I said, to even be a small part of it. So. Uh, yeah. Yes. Good. Good job. We'll stay in touch. Yep. For sure. All right. Mm -hmm. That's that's nice. Uh, it's it's nice to see good things happen to people that have been struggling, and you know nothing 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 comes without its uh, without its prices to pay. So there's always a there's always an invoice at the end of the day, and I guess in this case it's uh, you know putting up with the putting up with the drugs. But hey, judging from the number of people that I have known and do know that still have to go through the dialysis stuff and, and, and all those things and the stress of not quite knowing if you're going to be able to have a donor that steps up, whether you're going to be able to go back to the so-called normal life, uh, and air quotes uh, there are, are appropriate because nobody really knows what normal is. I guess everybody has their own normal. But for for the grace of God, go all of us, and uh, it's it's nice to see somebody hanging in there and doing well. So thanks, Jenny, for being yeah, here. Yeah, really cool, Lee, that uh, she actually found her donor through a kind of a, a blind box post yeah. or an anonymous post like, on Niagara 411. I don't, I don't think that would be everybody's prescription. Hey, you know, I don't think uh, the, the Kidney Association of Canada is looking at Niagara 411 and saying, hey, you want a kidney? Go to 411. Yeah, we're the we're but, your, uh, but we're, your new, <laughs> we're your new kidney hunting ground. I don't I don't think that that's probably true, but um, and it's something that you wouldn't normally 
expect? I, I would wager. I have no, I have no stats, so could be talking through my uh, beau chapeau hat, but uh, I would wager that most kidney donors come within the circle of friends or family of people that are in need. I mean, that would, that would, be, a, that would be my guess. Um, but for something to come around where someone comes from a, a completely stranger category it would be just through, through a site on social media, ah, what are the odds? Yeah. Now, what speaking of uh, searching, Lee, I mean, the search is on here for Lori Delito, I think. Well, here, you can get her name on here. As uh, This is an interesting story that rolled through Niagara 411. Uh, okay. We'll please have a read and see if we can get this extremely sentimental wedding band back to its own. Oh, right. To share. Please share from the original post. So, Lori Delolo put this up. Uh, we're in desperate search of a wedding band. We brought my mother to uh, a spa on Thursday, the 14th. It was her 75th birthday, and she was asked to remove her necklace during the treatment. Makes sense. She placed it in the pocket of her robe. The robe was accidentally placed in the women's change room laundry basket, meaning when she took the robe off, she forgot that it was in the pocket, obviously. Oh, how many times have we done stuff like that? You know, you, you, it, you're in a situation that's unusual, so you put something down where you don't normally put it down, and then you forget to retrieve it. I do it every day with something, but nothing this valuable, thank goodness. So they've contacted uh, the spa and the laundry service. But the, the, the caveat here is the fact that this laundry service services more than that one location. So that robe could have gone cleaned and washed to another facility other than the one that she was in. So that complicates things uh, immensely. My father passed away last year. My mother's upset over losing the ring. My dad never took it off after 56 years. And of course, the ring would have been on the necklace. Got that? Okay. Um, he never took it off for 56 years of marriage, even when working as a bricklayer. And it's just a simple wedding band, but nothing is simple when it comes to um, emotions like that. So if you could share this post, which we've done, uh, they greatly appreciate it. And hopefully, somewhere in a robe, that ring, uh, along with the necklace to which it's attached, is still there. We're hoping it's still there. And often in those, things can have a, you could be washed and tumbled, dried and all this stuff. And, uh, and it could still be in a pocket of, of one of those, one of those robes or it could very well be sitting in one of the big washers or one of the dryers that's used or something like that, in which case it might make a noise. Uh, but anyway, you know what we're looking for. I so. love this story though, Lee. I mean, well, I, I, this is so of its age. My dad never took it off after 56 mm -hmm. years of marriage. I, I proudly wear my ring. I know there's some married guys that don't. Some of it's because of the job they have or whatever, I but mine. I mean. I do mine. I take mine off. To mine's play pretty, sports, that's about it. Mine's pretty tight. Can you get it off? No. So how long do you think it's been on there? Like, when was the last time you think you had that thing off your hand? Like, are it you was, going back decades? It, it might. It, it, maybe not decades, but it, but if it is, it was only for like a couple of minutes because my finger had a um, an itch or I wanted to dry it or whatever. But uh, but right now. There's a little bit of there. There's a little bit of extra flesh on that finger. Uh, so I wasn't going to call you out. I was just more going for the. Uh, no, I'm just saying. No, uh, but you know you have those stories. But no, and I it's don't just take so it off. Heartwarming. Like, it doesn't matter nope. what I do. I don't take it off. You don't take it off. No. Eh? And, and I've been golfing. And I no, I I used to because uh, it can damage the gold, but that's the but that's the hand I wear the glove the golf glove on. So, it's yeah. protected a little bit. But oh, uh, and uh, I mean, well, it's amazing actually, how much your your hands and fingers actually like swell throughout the day. Because yeah. if my hands are swollen, my ring won't come off. Yeah. Pretty much. And it'll However, be there's times where I could just slip it off. It'll be 48 years for me. Wow, a couple this more year. years for you and Linda. This year, 48. And hit the big one. Yeah. 
Um, there's a photo right there, Lee, last uh, Friday. Oh, Kevin. We had the Friday preceding. That's your much better looking brother. Yeah, preceding March break. Uh, we went down, and thank you very much to Niagara Parks and David Adanes for allowing us to go through Niagara Parks and check out a lot of the attractions that they have down there. Yeah. And one thing that's great is with our kids going to the Catholic French School Board is their calendar doesn't line up with everybody else's school calendar. So on their PA day, nobody oh. else has the day off. Yeah, so you had some room to yourself. Absolutely. And it was a gorgeous day down there. So here I am right here, and I know you went down there as well. The I know exactly where you are. Boy, I tell you, that thing is impressive. Yeah, that's, the, is, tu- that's the tunnel. Yeah, that's the tunnel, and it's attached to the OPG power station. Yeah. It is, by the definition of the word, it is awesome. What a, You talk about a photo op, and there's a fine example of it um, right there. It's just amazing. Once you, once you go through the tunnel and you come out on that wonderful platform that, is, that they put up, because we, we talked with uh, David and Dames, manager of Niagara Parks Commission, when this was being opened. We, we, did the, we did the thing on this show. And, but when you walk through there, and you come out on that that platform, it's like, I don't think I ever want to leave here. I just want to kind of stand here and uh, and look all day. Yeah, it really is. It's, it's inspiring. It's fascinating. It's, it is. It's fascinating. That's probably a better adjective for it. But boy, oh boy, was that. And I'll tell you, Lee, last night um, I was at Niagara Falls Council. Mm-hmm. And David Adames and April Jeffs, who's the chair of the Niagara Parks Board, they were there kind of giving their annual update, but also forecasting and looking ahead. And their next project, which I believe is the Toronto Power Station. Right. OMG. They had some (laughs) renderings for this. It's going to be a five-star hotel. It's going to have a museum portion to it. There's going to be... um, Places that are publicly accessible, so don't think that there's you know there's going to be a lock on the yeah. front gate saying hey unless you're paying our whatever hundred a night for a room oh no there's going to be a lot of accessible parts right. in there for all the tourists that are coming down to Niagara but boy oh boy it was a lot of fun there we are with uh, friends of ours that's the opening of the tunnel you can see behind us that's a great shot and yeah. even that walk Lee like I got halfway through that walk and said when are you ever in a place like that I mean that has to be what forty feet round. Yeah, about that. That tunnel that you're walking yeah, through? Yeah, yeah, It's, yeah. you know, I mean, and that power station. Oh, there you go. I found these funny. The Nikola <laughs> Tesla dolls. <laughs> That's good. I mean, they're kitschy. I'll give it to them. They're kitschy, and you couldn't help but take a photo now, of that. Ex- but, but you have to explain this for the people that might not be... Uh, not, so, of course, you know... Nikola, Nikola Tesla, was. His, it was his technology, his invention that powered... The, the generators, et cetera. Yeah, I, I that, think Tesla that, that was, I think that was the whole um, direct current yeah. versus alternating current. Exactly. Tesla was the AC guy, and that yeah. led to power generation and yeah. transmission over long distances. Yeah. So Tesla pretty much heralded as like, you know, I think there's a statue down there of Tesla. But this yeah, there is, is, yeah. This is the plush version of <laughs> Nikola Tesla that's in. <laughs> that's and you know great. what? There's lots of cool stuff in that gift shop as well. If you're looking for a unique gift, and especially if you've got somebody in your family that's, um, Got a bit of a nerd bent to them. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's lots of cool T-shirts and stuff in there with Nikola yeah. Tesla and yeah. schematic drawings. There I am uh, outside of the OPG power station, which in itself is a massive building. Oh, phew. it's yeah. uh, you know you you really sense the enormity there. Are some of the kids, you know, great shot, can't beat that. That's Ayla and Alex and uh, their schoolmate Alex. So awesome. A couple Alexes. A couple Alexes. There we are with the whole fam jam on Clifton Hill. So I mean, there we are, gorgeous sunny day nice. and nice, you nice, know nice, Clifton nice, Hill. Nice, yeah. There's nobody, nobody really around. There we are, and and you can say what you want about uh, about the touristy stuff, and people use that term tourist traps and all that thing. Well, I grew up um, in uh, in Niagara, and Clifton Hill was always one, and Niagara Falls in particular. To this day, they say you take for granted when you're when you live around some place, when you grow up around a particular place. I have never, for some reason, uh, I have never fallen into that trap of taking Niagara and, uh, uh, and all of its natural wonders for granted. I never have, I still love them. It's uh, one of my, the, the falls and the rapids, one of my favorite places. Clifton Hill, I think, yeah, it's plasticky. Yeah, it's touristy. Yeah, it's got the, the Mounties made in China, you know, and all that hoo-ha, but it's still great. And it's still a lot of fun. And the museums and the and the things, it's it's a great time. They just keep adding. It you know, really With the is. OPG in the tunnel and they have, uh, they have plans moving into the forward, they're always yeah. progressing. 
and uh, and it's it's really it's really cool to see Lee. It's fun. It's fun. I'm glad you had a good time, Kevin. Yeah. It's nice nice for the family to do something like that. Um, I do want to quickly run by our sponsors again: Gales Gas Bars, Verge Insurance, Ace Alignment, Equal Wellness Services, uh, and of course, I want to give a nod to Kevin Newfeld and his gang at the Beau Chapeau Hat Shop. I'm going to come in soon looking for a spring uh, a spring dome coverer. Okay. So just beware, I'm coming in. <laughs> Toolbox Niagara uh, is uh, a program that we have highlighted often on this program. It is the brainchild and the baby, if you will, of uh, now almost a teenager, of James Simons. Uh, James began this as his own as his own community service uh, charity, I guess you'd, you'd put it uh, this way. How many years ago now, James, have you has has the Toolbox Niagara program been? 20, 2017, we launched. Yeah. And 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 I know we put a big push on around Christmas time, uh, but um, you're you're trying to keep you're trying to keep the foot on the pedal here with the Toolbox uh, project. Let, give us give us an update as to where you are, how you're doing, where you're going, and how we can help you. Well, thank you both for having me, and uh, thank you to the listeners and uh, donors across Niagara. Um, I really appreciate it, and we've got a lot of momentum this time, and uh, we're, we're running full steam ahead, and it's, it's very exciting. Um, Super Bowl, uh, pre-Super Bowl, the very beginning, first week of playoffs, I said to my mom, why do we get to have snacks and the homeless at the shelter don't get to have snacks? <laughs> of course, snacks wouldn't be in the budget. The focus would be uh, daily meals. I said, I'm going to see if anyone would be interested in donating snacks. And she's like, you don't have to do everything. You don't have to save everything. And I'm like, no, but I feel they deserve snacks. So I, I was uh, actually talking to Tara from uh, Bolt Realty. And she's like, we'll have a bin. We'll support you. We'll get behind you. So uh, I did a small brief campaign, Super Bowl snacks, donated everything to Suffered Shelter, a restaurant in Thorold. Um, they want to be unanimous. They don't like the publicity. They don't do it for credit. Uh, they donated five gallons of chili, uh, over 55 sandwiches. That's great. Uh, filled a boardroom at Bolt Realty with uh, snacks. Um, we did get some criticism. And people were like, why are you feeding them unhealthy stuff? But when was the last time a homeless person had a bag of chips? When was the last time a homeless person had a pot? If we can have it, why can't they? It when, was one yeah, day. Yeah. When, when was the last time any of us watching a Super Bowl ate healthy stuff? Yeah, I mean, it could be <laughs> if you're popping an M&M in your mouth every time Taylor Swift came on, you might go through a few bags of M&Ms, but it was one day. Um, so with that momentum, I was like, I thought about doing something in the spring, socks, underwear, Deodorant as the uh, individuals are leaving uh, shelters, going into encampments, going, some have nowhere to go. And I'm like, we will all be probably heading to the outlet, Giant Tiger or Costco anytime soon, purchasing our underwear, socks for the mm -hmm. spring, being ready. Why can't they? Uh, I got an email from Niagara Kung Fu uh, Academy last week, and they're a big sponsor of ours on McCall Road in uh, Niagara Falls. They said, are you doing anything for the spring? I've got three potential sponsors. I said, no, not right now, but I said, let me get back to you. So I went to social media, and our trusted uh, supporters, donors, sponsors, everyone's like, why aren't you doing this? We'll help. So April 1st, 26th, yeah. uh, we're doing Spring Refresh. We're going to call it Homeless is Not a Joke, but we want to, uh, we know that Homeless is Not a Joke because we're starting on April 1st. But uh, we're going to do uh, April 1st to 26th. I'll be collecting spring items, uh, socks, underwear, and deodorant. And we are breaking down the barrier of just serving men. We would look horrible to show up at a shelter with just stuff for men and nothing for the women. So we'll be accepting donations from uh, both for both men and women. Uh, Bolt Realty is another uh, sponsor they're having to be in. The Kung Fu School on April 6th has got a sword training for adults and kids, and if they bring a toolbox item, they can uh, chop like a watermelon half of the sword. 
Uh, they've been absolutely amazing. Kung Fu Academy, all the same sponsors, some new sponsors. Uh, I received an email from a, someone in Port Colbert this morning asking why there was no bin in Port Colbert, someone in Grimsby. Uh, we don't have bins there, but if anyone's willing to have a bin there or participate, we're always looking for more people. We're very excited about this campaign because we're backing it on uh, momentum from Super Bowl, and uh, we just seem to people are just running with us, so why not, right? Hey, yeah, if, 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 you're, if you have a wave, you might as well ride it, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and um, following up on your appeal for people that want to jump on board, how do they jump on board? Tell us how. Toolbox Niagara at gmail.com. Uh, at Christmas, we delivered our 6,005 fifth package. Uh, from 2017, a goal of 25. We've delivered 6,005 now toolboxes. Mm -hmm. 1141 was our number for Christmas. We finished very strong. Again, very, very thankful for the supporters. CAA got on board and they ran with our campaign. It was actually uh, quite fun. They got. Uh, some of their uh, suppliers to get on board. Uh, we had a really large community night with some of the donors came out to meet us. They had not met us and uh, they wanted to meet me face to face. And we had uh, ugly sweaters and uh, <laughs> Chuck LaFleur and Giant FM. Uh, we had tons of food and CAA is coming back on board again this year. We're thankful for Bolt, Bolt Realty. Again, they run with us, throw on fire, they challenge. The other station in the city, Station 1, challenges Station 4, which makes it a big camaraderie with the guys because they all train together now. Mm -hmm. So Station 1, when they host the Station 4 guys, they have bragging rights. So. But at the end of the day, we're helping the homeless. It, 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 competition or no competition, we're going to help those in need. We're going to try to get stuff to the RAF. Um, if people need stuff for agencies or are doing outreach, again, they can reach out to us. We don't think of every organization and we don't want to miss anyone. Well, um, I don't think you'll end up missing anybody because it just sort of grows, as you've been saying, it grows exponentially and congratulations on, on that. And again, you know, you can say job well done, but it never really is uh, expresses enough uh, appreciation for what it is you do. So what do you do in all your spare time? <laughs> um, well, I work full time for Costco. Yeah. I'm an active lion with the Grantham Lions. I am now the TCAG president for the next three years. I just got installed. Uh, one of my donors asked if I would come on their board. Um, I'm thinking about it, but um, I like to have a little bit of time for myself, enjoy local festivals, hockey games. Sure. Well, that's that's understandable. You have to t you have to be able to take a breath every now and then. Uh, Toolbox Niagara, uh, James Simons, uh, we've, we've sort of followed you from the beginnings of this when you started this because there were an awful lot of services and uh, charities and things out there helping, um, and rightfully so, helping the, the women who were in, in harm's way in Niagara. And you said, well, uh, let's, let's reach out and help some of the guys that are that are in need as well and from that this is has grown into this and so I think there's still a long way to come I think sure. we've made progress uh, making community partners sponsors building friendships uh, some beautiful stories I think they're uh, we just got to keep moving I don't think we're unfortunately gonna ever get the day where we only need 10 toolboxes that would be nice mm. but I think our number is gonna increase We've always, uh, we've always said, uh, when I've talked to various people from the Community Cares Program and all of the communities that, that run food banks, et cetera, and, and help people that are in need, and people like yourself, we would love to see the day where we don't need you. We would love to have the day when uh, we don't need food banks, and we don't need the donations, and we can say, stop giving, uh, everybody's okay. But unfortunately, it appears that we're never gonna get to that day. So as long as we need it, uh, and there are people like you to help supply it, God bless you, it's great work. It's not me, it's the community. I really I know. thank you guys, and yeah. <laughs> it's everyone. Uh, somebody, somebody has to lead the charge, man. Somebody's gotta lead <laughs> the charge. 
Thank you. All right, James Simons, uh, Toolbox Niagara. Uh, if you want to help him out, check him out. Do the Google and uh, and you'll find him for sure. And uh, this big, uh, this spring fling uh, <laughs> movement is on from April first until the twenty sixth. So so look at opportunities in uh, in places in your community in uh, Niagara for Toolbox Niagara. Uh, Lee, uh, just Kevin. setting up. Um Setting up our next guest here, we got Anita Dior coming on in just a second. Um, there's drag shows coming up in Welland, and we love promoting those. Here was something that flew under the radar. It wasn't on uh, 411, but it was happening in our community. And um, last weekend, I was pretty disappointed to see this as uh, the St. Catharines Public Library tried to put on a drag queen story time. And it was, oh. um, it was protested by, well, by this guy. It seemed, I don't, I don't even want to say a special interest group. It was more a couple of individuals. Okay. Um, and I've had some talks with people about this that may not share my point of view. But the weird thing is, is if it's not illegal, why are you getting involved? I don't know why these people go out of their way to try and shut down something. But do they think that all of a sudden they're the moral police of society? Is that what's going on? My morality must be the morality of yeah. the society in which I live. It doesn't work like yeah. that. We don't. We all don't share the same values. That's why we have laws. And if people are doing illegal things, that's one thing. But if they're just doing something you don't agree with, I have stay to, the hell out of it. I have to claim personal ignorance of this particular story. But I understand exactly the movements that you're talking about. And we have talked about this on the, on the program before because there was a lot of, there, there was a lot of pushback against uh, story time in, in libraries uh, being conducted by or uh, readers coming from the LGBTQ plus community and and great pushback because of the concept that alternate lifestyle people are trying to indoctrinate our uh, children. Um, indoctrination uh, isn't the issue, it's not the goal, it's not the result, but inclusivity and perspective is. Inclusivity and perspective is good. But as they say, perception is reality. This man on your screen perceives something that is his reality. And why, as Kevin says, why he feels that it is important or even relevant for him to impose his perception of his reality on others that are there trying to do a positive thing is beyond me. And you should be ashamed of yourself for being such a closed thinker. Or, excuse me, not a thinker at all. Yeah, I'd go so far. And, I mean, this is the actual You're footage, not a surely. I mean... Thankfully, I'm not sharing any of the audio because it's not worth listening to. It's not but, I mean, important. That's the, right point, inside, the point is obvious. Yeah, that's right inside St. Catherine's Public Library. I think this is going back um, going back last weekend. So anyway, Lee, um, let's set up our next guest here because we've got uh, Anita Dior and Filthy Richard joining us on the program. Okay. Anita Dior, Filthy Richard. Hey. Um, so, um, I have not had an opportunity to go in depth into detail about uh, what we're talking about today, which is an opportunity for you to tell me what we're talking about today. Hi folks, welcome to the program. What's going on in your world? What's happening? Hello, hello. How is everyone doing over there? Good, good, good. Uh, so again, uh, I am Anita Dior and this is uh, Filthy Richard. Hi, how are you? Uh, we are event coordinators, producers out here in the Niagara region. Uh, we provide a platform uh, for those new and old uh, in the drag uh, and performing arts industry. Um, I have established recovery in 2020, and uh, since then I've met uh, Filthy Richard at uh, other community events, and we have now provided a platform for many of uh, the youth and uh, other people uh, in the community to uh, have a spot to perform. Uh, again, like you said, it's very important to be uh, inclusive in this uh, community and not exclusive. So uh, there's a lot of people that are part of our cabaret that are not uh, part of that queer lifestyle mm -hmm. um, that do perform with us too. So that's a huge thing I wanted to highlight. Um, we provide uh, the first open stage opportunity in the 
Niagara region, or yeah, in the Niagara region, I guess you could say, uh, for newbies to kind of come and uh, strut your stuff and try out uh, the drag lifestyle or performance art lifestyle. Uh, and we recently opened it up not to drag artists. But and I'm, also sorry, I'm sorry, can you, can you repeat? I'm having a hard time hearing you. We also opened up the event to drag, um, not just with new drag artists, but also comedians, singers, dancers, Anyone who wants to kind of have their like little 15 minutes in fame, um, you're welcome at our open stage at Club Rouge in Niagara Falls. That's 5951 uh, Main Street. Uh, okay. And that's in the middle of Mints and Peppermints. But uh, it's a very safe and inclusive environment. We have security, we have store people, we have an amazing uh, opportunity for people to do, uh, like I said, hit that Vegas style stage here in Niagara. Right. Um, yeah. We host it together. Yeah, we host it together. We uh, definitely have uh, opened up that opportunity for everyone. Uh, we have a show actually coming up in Lefty's Kitchen in Welland on March 22nd, and that's going to do what and uh, shows you the cabaret style. We have lots of movies that have been on our shows as well. Um, lots of audience members, first time kind of coming out and doing uh, performances with us. And then we also have um, a new venue we want to announce, and that's in Crystal Beach. And Rick will tell you a little bit about that. Um, so anybody in Crystal Beach, um, we are going to be doing a bingo there. Um, and we're bringing in a couple of people from Toronto, so that will have a, like a whole new cast of characters for people to come watch. It's going to be a really fun event. It is a 19 plus event, but it's also kind of like a class year, like for less style, like wine and bar kind of event. like. You would be able to bring your family here if you wanted to. And that's okay. our Crystal Shop here in the area, and that is April 3rd. And um, most of our events start at the 7.30 mark, or 7 mark. And uh, they run about two hours, so until 9.30, so they're not too late. But our open stage events just start at uh, 9 o'clock, and that goes until about 10 or 11. Okay. Niagara Falls. I, ha I, I have to tell you that we're, we're having a bit uh, of an audio snafu here, so some of the some of the information didn't get didn't get through audio uh, audibly as well as oh. it, it could have, but that's it. That's okay. Uh, but you have these you have these events listed uh, online or on a website somewhere, correct? Yes, that's under Anita Cabaret. It's I N I T A and then C A A R E T. Okay. On Instagram and Facebook. All right, and it'll be on our broadcast uh, as well. So thanks for being here. Good luck with your shows. Uh, I hope everything goes well and everybody has a great time, which I'm sure they will. And, uh, you know, keep up the good fight. And awesome. anyone that is interested in performing with us, you can message us on Facebook Instagram. And don't be scared. We're not scary. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thanks. Thanks. There's a, a Anita Cabaret there. Yeah, too bad about that, Lee. But here you go. You can find them, um, Anita Cabaret. So there's their Facebook page right there. And, of course, usually the handles are the same across socials. Um, so feel free to reach out. And uh, sounds like they've got a lot of fun stuff coming up. Yeah. Uh, oh, look at that there, Lee. That looks fun. hoo <laughs> <laughs> uh, want to thank our uh, sponsors uh, again before we uh, get ready to uh, sign off for yet another week. Uh, Jam Pack Show. Today, today uh, for sure. Gales Gaspars, um, serving all of Niagara for well over the past 50 years and well into the probably the next millennium as well. Gales.ca uh, is the place to go to find out about all of their services and the things that they do. And it's certainly not just pumping gas. Um, they're fuel suppliers, um, diesel, uh, colored and uncolored, uh, as well as uh, home heating oil and fuel oil and all sorts of things and it it's been an easier winter this year for the delivery of home oil i know sometimes their trucks uh, and their drivers are uh, really in deep uh, in literally in winters but it's it's thank goodness it's been a bit of an easier delivery for that but locally owned and operated jess friesen uh, and her gang do a fabulous job. So thanks for being our main sponsor here of the program. Uh, Mark Shirk and the gang um, over at uh, Verge Insurance, we also thank you. Verge Insurance Group, very, very long service, almost a, like almost 100 years or so, this, uh, this insurance group's been going. It's crazy. I didn't know it. Crazy. Decades and decades. For home, auto, business, life, insurance needs, Verge Insurance Brokers here, another born and bred company in Niagara. Ace Alignment, uh, Janice Purdy uh, and, uh, and gang, 
uh, thank you so much for being one of our more recent sponsors. Been with us a number of months now, specializing in wheel alignments and brakes and just about anything for your automotive needs. Uh, tucked away uh, nice, and, nice and cozy on North Street in St. Catharines, just off Geneva, behind the new police station. I guess it's, uh, I guess it's still a new police station. We can call it that. <laughs> but that's where uh, Ace Alignment is. Uh, and of course, uh, we also want to thank Equal Wellness Services. Audrey Wall, uh, better known for many, many years here in Niagara as the foot nurse, because boy, uh, for anything and everything to do with foot care, uh, even uh, diabetic foot care and people that are suffering specific things. That's, uh, that's where Audrey's uh, genesis was, if you will, but she's expanded her operation right now to include many, many wellness services and um, they're located on Vine Street in St. Catharines between Scott Street and St. and uh, between Scott and Carlton is yeah, what I'm trying that. to say. Now let's take a peek at uh, St. Paul Street. Leo, there we are. Just, just missed the bus. Hope that wasn't yours. <laughs> just missed the bus. Uh, and again, we we had to, we had some winterage going on this morning with some snow squalls and stuff. This is spring. Welcome to spring. First day of spring. Yeah. By li the way. Literally a week ago today, yeah. Lee, I brought the kids and my parents to Port Dalhousie to go play on the beach because it was such a nice day. Oh, I know. We've had some fabulous weather. It's it's been a non-wintry winter, and I know people scream about climate change and everything else, but. You know, we're not going to go there. It's uh, weather is weather, you know, and uh, sometimes we're breaking records that were set in 1972. So you can't just say, oh, we had a hot winter because of climate change. Uh, well, uh, it's weather, you know, what are you going to do? Um, not that I'm at a climate change or, you know, discussion, but you know, I, I don't think we have to, uh, I don't think we have to bar the doors just yet. Uh, but it's been <laughs> it was a great winter for non-snow lovers. That is that is for sure. And welcome to spring, 2024. Yeah, are we officially there. When when did we cross the threshold? Uh, when, when exactly the date was, I don't know. But we're in spring right now, as far as I know. You might want to check that date. I was going to do that earlier. Check the check the time because it usually says that the spring equinox happens at uh, I don't know 12:22 on the, I don't know. I, but I don't know. I don't know what that, uh, as you yeah, say, threshold know. was. I don't know. Uh, but anyway, it's it's spring, right now. I, and I, I hope it stays uh, cold for a couple of days here because I'm going south. <laughs> so I want I want you, I, Kevin. I want you to be cold while I'm warm. That's how you always wanted, right? <laughs> you can yeah. send me back those jealousy pictures of <laughs> yeah. your toes in the sand. Uh, Lee, musical guest today. Okay. I uh, remember the band Putty. We had them on about I a do month ago. What have you? Paulo came on. Great guy from yeah. uh, kind of St. David's yeah, area. Yeah, super guy. Um, anyway, they just released a second single from their album, and it's called "It Has a Name," and All it right. coincides with the new music video as well. So it has a name from Putty. Are we going there now? Uh, yeah, I'll just let you throw. All right. Uh, Kevin, Jack, ladies and gentlemen, co-founder of WeStream, Canada's premier streaming service. And um, we'll get into that in a couple weeks and talk a little bit more about Kevin. We, we didn't talk about much much about you guys this week, but uh, you've done a great job here yet again. April 3rd is our next show. Uh, it's headed toward the, uh, the total eclipse thing, and uh, we're going to do our best to... Get you ready? Oh, yeah, no uh, yeah, right, right now. Uh, here's Putty uh, to play us off the stage. Have a good weekend.